So I grew up in this house in which Chinua Achebe had lived, and Chinua Achebe obviously is considered the father of African literature. I don't think I consciously was aware of how sort of important this was um, until I was much older. So I, you know, I just sort of knew vaguely, yes, that Achebe has lived here before us. And then when my first novel was about to be published, and I told my editor, sort of matter of fact, oh, by the way, I said to her, isn't that interesting? And she just thought, that's the most important thing you've told me, right? This has to go in your biography. You lived in the same house as Chinua Achebe. And I think that's when I started to realize the magnitude of this coincidence. So I started reading quite early. I was an early reader and also an early writer. And I was reading, and I was reading a lot of British and American books for children because those were the books that were easily available. And so when I started to write, I started to write the kinds of things I was reading. So all my characters were white and blue-eyed and played in the snow and and ate apples and all of those things. And um, it just didn't occur to me that this was odd because I, all the books I read were like that. And, um, and I think in some ways slowly, I, that changed when I discovered African literature, when I discovered books in which people were like me. Right? But it was, it, was a, it was a glorious shock of discovery. <laughs> and I think I was, I, was maybe, uh, I was maybe nine, I think about nine when I first read. I'm a book called The African Child, and then Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart. And I think that's when I, I mean, I kept writing the Enid Blyton stories, but slowly I started to realize that it was okay to write about people who were like me and who ate mangoes and who, you know, who lived in my world. So I guess this is sort of my way of saying it's really important for people to see themselves reflected in literature. Otherwise, you really don't know in a conscious way that your story is worthy of literature. So I was 19 when I first went to America to go to school, and I think that I had my sensibility was sort of resolutely Nigerian. And so going to the US, I don't think that the stories I wanted to tell changed. I'm not even sure that how I told them changed. Or maybe they did. I mean, in some ways, I think my first novel, um, Purple Hibiscus, was a very nostalgic book. It was about Nigeria, but it was a kind of a romanticized Nigeria. I was homesick because I'd been in the US for four years. I hadn't been home. And so I wrote about Nigeria, but from it was sort of, I think it would have been a different book if I had been in Nigeria. It would have been in some ways less not nostalgic, I think. But I don't think that living in the U.S. changed my, my subject. I think that my, I think all of my work in some ways is, is about Nigeria and will continue to be, and it doesn't matter where I am. With Half of a Yellow Sun, which was, I mean, I think the reason I sort of, Half of a Yellow Sun was different. And it's, it's, it's different from everything else I've done, really. And, and I think it was because of the amount of research I had to do. So I, I, knew, I knew the stories, I had heard stories, but I really wanted to, I wanted to arm myself with knowledge. So I went off and I read every damn thing that has been written about that period. And then I talked to all kinds of people because I wanted, and a lot of what I, I discovered didn't go in the book, but it was information that I needed to know to, so that I could tell the story with confidence. And, um, and I did quite a bit of research for about a year and a half, just researching, and then I started to write. But while I was writing, I was also interviewing people, looking at archives, um, you know, listening to old music, that sort of thing. I, I, you know, I sort of, I, I like to say that Chinua Achebe is the writer whose work is most important to me, because in some ways I like to say that his work gave me permission. And, and by saying that, I mean that until I read him, and really started to read him. I've read everything of his. I, it just it gave me a certain kind of confidence to tell stories of, of Nigeria, of Igbo people, of African people. But there's so many writers I love. And uh, you know, I, I, I read a lot of um, Russian literature growing up, and I absolutely loved um, those. I really, I just find that I'm inspired by everything that's, that's good. I, and I also have find that I have phases. So I, for example, went through a very intense Edith Wharton love phase where I wanted to read everything she'd done. And then after a while, I got sick. And I thought, if I read one more thing about <laughs> upper class New York society in Edith Wharton's time, I will throw up. But so really, I mean, I, for me, the question about literary influences often means, who do I remember that I loved recently? Because I, there's just so many writers I love. I've just started reading John McGregor. John McGregor's um, upcoming uh, book. I'm a very keen fan of his. I've read his two novels. I think it's very good.